Torah today that we have is the original Torah given to Moses. Um, and uh, there's probably some good reasons for Torah it is, is it? The Torah today that we have is the original Torah given to Moses. Um, and uh, there's probably some good reasons for that. I mean, obviously, it's, um, the Quran suggests that, the Hadith suggests that. But in the, the, the Torah we have today, there's some striking things that people often don't realize are there, quite shocking things. For example, David is called God in Psalm 45. If you don't believe me, look it up, Google it, Psalm 45, verses 6 and 7. The king, the Israelite king, is addressed as God, right? So there's a human being called God. Um, in another book of the Bible called Chron 1 Chronicles, the first, chron first book of Chronicles, chapter 29, Solomon um, is, uh, becomes the king of Israel and he is worshipped, again look it up, worshipped along with God by Israel itself. And then Solomon, according to 1 Chronicles chapter 29, look it up, sits on the throne of Yahweh. Now, Yahweh is the God of Israel, obviously. And according to that passage of the Bible, Solomon is not only worshipped alongside God, but he sits on the throne of Yahweh. Now, it doesn't say anywhere in this passage that Solomon is Yahweh, or is God, but he has such an exalted status that he even sits on God's throne and receives prostration and homage along with God in 1 Chronicles 29. Look it up, read it for yourself. There are many other passages as well where human beings are given the role of God or play the Even part Jesus. of God. Moses as well is called Elohim in uh, yeah. Ezekiel, um, sorry, I'll Exodus seven, chapter, seven, seven, chapter seven. 7. Melchizedek, who you've already mentioned, in the Jewish tradition, particularly the Dead Sea Scrolls, Melchizedek um, is referred to not only as Elohim, but when Old Testament passages are quoted which refer to Yahweh, his name is inserted. So he has the role of Yahweh um, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Again, Google it. Um, you may not, I don't know if it's on Google or not, but this is in the academic books that are, I've read by special. So the point here is, is because uh, Paul is looking at it from an Islamic point of view, monotheism uh, and one God, etc., which we believe in one God, but he, he doesn't believe in the Trinity. Because he's looking at the Bible from an Islamic perspective, anything in the Bible that he disagrees with, well, it's not the original. It's a contradiction. But Christian theologians, like if you read um, Athanasius, uh, Contramundum, you read that the early church fathers saw Christ in the Old Testament. They, were, they saw everything in the Old Testament was about Christ. So Solomon uh, is a type of Christ. Melchizedek is a type of Christ. They're all types of the final Messiah. So there, there are hints of uh, God just being more than one within his being. Uh, even in the Old Testament. And so Paul and Muslim uh, scholars don't like that. And they say, well, that's not originally in the Torah. But to say that, you know, we have the Maserati, we have the Septuagint, we have the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's very, very clear that the Torah that we had, that, that Moses uh, produced, um, that Muhammad uh, actually... Uh, believed in is the Torah that we have today and to say that we don't have that uh, today uh, is to me intellectually vacuous in this area from, from Yale for example uh, John Collins has written a book recently he's a professor in testament at Yale uh, where he discusses uh, these passages and many many other passages as well so the idea in the Bible that only so let, let's just have a Google. Let's have a Google of John Collins at Yale. Let, 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 I just want to... He's mentioned John Collins of Yale. Let's Google John Collins of Yale. Of Yale. And let's find out about his credentials and his background.
John Collins of Yale, a native of Ireland, Professor Collins was a professor of Hebrew at the University of Chicago. Previously taught at Notre Dame, he has published widely on the subject. Uh, his books include The Dead Sea Scrolls, A Biography of Early Judaism, Compremacy Overview, September, etc., The Apocalyptic Imagination, The Bible After the Babel, Historical Criticism in a Postmodern Age, King and Messiah, Son of God, The Sectarian Movement, etc. Let's just listen to what he has to say. So that's a conversation with uh, John Collins. So what what do I get from that? What I get from that is, you know, I've been doing academic theology for about ten years, um, like actually in university and and seminary, etc. And yeah, Yale, Yale uh, University and the Divinity Department is a liberal department. They don't believe in the full inspiration of the Bible. They don't believe in inerrancy. 
and we can see the 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 professor that we listen to uh he's obviously got more of a, a liberal education social socialist kind of agenda he's obviously not an inerrantist or a person who actually believes in the full inspiration of the bible um because you can tell that he's saying look you know he's kind of critical as well as accepting of, of things of the bible and it, and it was nuanced there and it came out a little bit um so paul williams here is quoting let's hear it again uh, these passages and many many other passages as well so the idea in the bible that only jesus see i don't have a problem with recognize i know some muslims do but some parts of the testament do call jesus god and they're not that's not the injil given to given to jesus it's a corrupted text so, um but there are lots of people in the bible who call god yeah. um it's, uh, when god moses have got to pharaoh yeah, yeah. it could mean to could be to that obscenium has a Yes. Well, what it means, yes, what it is, is a metaphorical thing. Yeah. It's not a metaphysical thing. So they don't have um, a filter. That's the problem. They, they don't have. It's very very point. The Tawhid has uh, the idea that pure monotheism of God is weakened to such an extent that they they say these things. And it's interesting, even in John's Gospel, which has the highest estimation of Jesus, um, in John chapter I, I ten. Did, I, we'll, we'll, we'll go back. We'll go. We'll, we'll, we'll carry on this in a minute. But I wanted to find the bit where he actually quotes Collins. Says Collins. I just want to get back to that. The Muslims at Hyde Park, and in any debate, if we started to quote liberal Islamic scholars, they wouldn't even accept it as an argument. They would just brush it off and say, oh, it's the Orientalist. Yet, Paul Williams is presented to the public as if Christian theologians agree with him, but he's failing to point out that these are liberal theologians. And... The difference between Christianity and Islam, we do have in the West theologians who are liberal, who, who are critical of the Bible, don't believe in orthodoxy. And we have a lot of them around. And so, you know, it, it, it beggars belief uh, because Islam, they suppress any critical analysis. They suppress anybody who rejects the Quran in, in their scholarship. So it, it's not fair. It's not fair to bring out liberal scholars and said these are on our side as islam liberal christian scholars not to mention that they're liberal christian scholars but yet if we was to do the same to you if we was to bring uh, islamic liberal scholars and show show them and say they agree with us you'd be saying oh they're orientalist we don't want to listen to them so again it's a hypocrisy and a, and a, a, an unfair standard the jews the jews as it's called as if Jesus isn't a Jew, the Jews uh, accuse Jesus of making himself equal to God and making himself out to be God. And Christians always quote this. Say, look, look, even the it's Jews like recognize against him, no. as a proof. And what's it's interesting is that the same gospel has Jesus say, you that, say these, uh, that these Jews, their father is Satan, the father of lies. Right? So the Christians are quoting explicitly satanic testimony, okay? And Satan ain't no friend of Jesus. Because they want to discredit Jesus, the, the Satan, the Satan does. And then what does Jesus do? In Mark, and again, Google it, look it up. John chapter ten. Does he say, "You're right, I am God, or I make him"? He said, "No." He refutes them. Yeah. If you actually read the so whole he passage, he, he refutes it, and he uses arguments based on Psalm eighty-two, which says, uh, "Ye are gods." So, and he seems to. It's quite a convoluted. He, basically, he's saying is. If, if, you, if, 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 even, what you say, if, if yeah, if even creative beings agree. can be called God, why do you have a problem with me when I say I'm the Son of God? Yeah. So he actually deflects, re turns around the argument, refutes them. These are the the shaitans who accuse of making himself equal with God. But the irony is the Christians take the one verse there and say, look, even the Jews acknowledge he was claimed to be God. Actually, it was those whose father is Satan, according to Jesus. And he, then he refutes and rejects what they say. And I've always, I've always found it hilarious, actually, the Christians quote this. I say, okay, come and look at the passage in context. And you'll yeah, find it do. says precisely the opposite of what you're claiming. So, Jesus refutes and rejects what they say. Uh, um, and this is a great irony, because they say Jesus is God, and yet he argues against them. Well, I've... I've got. I've done a study through the Gospel of John week by week for many, many weeks, so I, I'm familiar with the passage. And if you read uh, John chapter ten, 
Uh, well, the first point I want to say here is, uh, again, it's eisegesis, not exegesis. It's picking things out of context and not actually getting things in context, what he's doing. He's saying that the Christian, uh, the, the Jews were, um, that J the Jews were reacting and as if Jesus was claiming to be God and blasphemous. And yet he's saying that the Christians are using this as an argument, yet even Jesus says that the Jews were satanic. So how can you use this as an argument? That, that's eisegesis rather than exegesis. Yeah, Jesus says that they were satanic. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that you can't come to certain conclusions. The conclusions were they were satanic because they were rejecting who he was. They were rejecting that he was of the Father, that he was one with the Father. That's where the satanic comes in. So when they're reacting to him and saying, you're blaspheming, there's the satanic aspect that they're not recognizing is 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 divine call now in, in in john chapter 10 when the lord is quoting that psalm if you look at the context of the psalm if you read uh, john 10 and you look at the psalm the context of the psalm what the lord is saying is look you have a a problem with me being the son of god yet there are divine titles to these people now if you look at the context of the psalm, God is rebuking them because they think that they are, are God. He's rebuking them. And that's really, really important. He's rebuking them because they think they are gods. And what Jesus is saying, they were people who thought they were gods. Right? And you've got no problem with them. And yet, I'm the one who is righteous, and I'm the one who is obeying the Father. Look at your hypocrisy. So there was, it, it, there was more nuance to it than even Paul Williams will give it credit. If you go to... Um, Just um, ah, sorry, 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 sorry. So, yeah, if you go to um, Psalm 82, Bible.org. There are a number of articles there that go into the explanation of it. And uh, it goes into the kind of deep stuff. But we just go to Psalm, uh, John chapter 10. Uh, we just go to John chapter 10. says truly truly I say to you he who does not enter the sheepfold and so it goes verse 7 Jesus said again truly truly I say to you I am the door of the sheep all who come before me are thieves and robbers and he goes on I am the good shepherd verse 11 so right there is language of divinity because God in the Old Testament says I'm the good shepherd and Jesus says and I'm good the shepherd and so and then verse 36 he he says, Do you say of him who the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the Son of God? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. So, the references to Psalm 8. So, in John chapter 10, we see uh, the Lord using the word shepherd, which is in reference to God being shepherd. So, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. In Ezekiel, the Lord says, I will be the shepherd. God says, I'll be the shepherd. So Jesus is using divine language about himself. And when he's quoting this psalm, 
he's actually using it to defend his divinity completely opposite so if you go to bible.org and look up psalm 82 there are a number of articles on the psalm and uh, you know you can get a better exegetical understanding of that passage um, than what Paul is giving so I hope this is helpful this is in-depth studying in-depth critical analysis and I hope it's a blessing to you and I hope it's resourcing you and I hope it, you come to know the Lord or you come to be a better uh, apologist by me going through this with with you concerning Paul Williams thank you for listening